Hi guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another Vector Made tutorial. This is going to be the fourth in my toolbar series, which are tutorials for beginners to Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump on in. We're going to be talking about these line art tools over here. So the line segment tool, arc tool, spiral tool, spiral tool rectangular grid tool, and the polar grid tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull these out to make a little sub menu so we can see everything that's going to be discussed. First up is the line segment tool hotkey backslash and this one's really simple all you have to do is click to start hold drag and release and you've made yourself a line segment really really simple right so uh, you can do this as many times as you want in any direction you want as quickly as you can get them out there I mean I just slash 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 right I'm doing a bunch right it's a lot faster than having to do it with the pen tool and restarting a whole bunch so that it's it has its uses i don't use it too often but there are times when you need to create lines very quickly i think this would be a great way to do that um, the other thing you can do is um, you can hold shift to create something at a 90 degree angle um, 80 degree 180 degree angle or 45 um, holding in shift will just lock you into one of these directions here um, the other thing you can do is if you just click You'll get the line segment tool option menu. You can enter in the length specifically. I'm working in inches. It might say pixels. It might say points. It just depends on what your settings are at the moment. Here's the angle that you would shoot it out at. And then fill line will give the line a fill if you have a fill color set. So right now, I don't have anything. If not, it's not going to worry about that. But I'll just kind of show you um, what this looks like. OK, so this has a fill of nothing. If I end up changing the fill, now this is not selected, but if I end up changing my fill to red and then come over here and click again with fill line checked and then select that, you'll see that it has a red fill. Now you can't see it because it's just a line segment. So the fill's running along this line, but I'll show you in a sec why that matters for certain applications. And you'll see as we go along, it makes a difference on these other things. Um, but over here, you can see no fill when I select the left segment. I select the right segment, and there's a red fill. Now, if you were going to take the pen tool, which you can look at my last uh, tutorial to go over um, the pen tool, or actually two tutorials ago, I discussed the pen tools. But if we use the pen tool, you can pick up on one of these ends here where these anchor points are and start creating more shapes if you need to. So let's do that and just pull this out, drag it to here, and then come down making a sort of triangle here that isn't perfectly straight. And then we'll do the same thing over here. I'm just clicking on the anchor point, and I'm gonna come out here, and then I'm gonna do that. And so this is where that fill makes a difference. If you end up making the shape bigger than just a line segment, the fill matters. It's not a huge deal to me. I don't really use this option all that often, so most of the time I'm just gonna do stuff by hand anyway. But I thought, you know, it's in there. Might as well tell people how to do it. Um, and if you find that it's a useful tool for you, then great, go for it. The next tool in this set is the arc tool. So if I click on that and come out here and click and drag, I'll get a preview of where that arc's gonna go. And if I release, it's gonna create a line segment that has an arc to it. Um, and you can change the uh, width and the direction um, you can come down, you can come down to the right, all sorts of different ways to do this with your hand. Um, but it, but it keeps some of the same characteristics of, of this original that I just wrote here, or whatever your settings are, it's going to kind of keep those roughly the same. There's a certain amount of slope that is in there, regardless of how wide or tall I make it. They're not exact because your width and height it's going to be a little bit different based on where you release, but that there is a similar curvature to these. And where you set that is if you if you click, instead of clicking and dragging, you'll get the uh, options menu just like the line segment tool. And in here you can set the X axis, which is going to be uh, your horizontal. And then the Y axis is your, is your vertical. This is going to be where your point starts. So if you're here, it's going to curve from the bottom left up to the top right 
and this is going to be the reverse of that where it will start from the top right and curve down to the bottom left. Um, open versus closed just means that your shape will either be a, if it's open, it's going to be a segment only. If you close it, it means it's no longer going to be a segment, but it's going to be a full shape. So I'll show you the difference on that. If I just click here and say open, I get, there's my line segment. And if I click here and say closed, it's the same shape here. It just finishes off the shape by coming straight down and then straight over. And you can also do this with the pen tool. If I grab my pen tool over here, hotkey P, and click on this anchor point, and then I could come all the way down. I'm holding shift to make that a straight line, and then hold shift to make this a straight line. And you'll see that little circle underneath my pen tool. That finishes out the shape. It's the same thing, exact same thing. Um, I'm going to delete those real quick and click on this again. The slope is uh, from concave to convex. It was set at 50. I don't remember what the default is. It's probably about 50. Um, you can bump that up to 100% uh, concave. Well, it's not a percent, but it's just a, uh, a value that ranges from 0 to 100 and also down from uh, 0 to minus 100, so that would be concave. You can see the difference there. Um, and then the other thing is the fill arc. So fill arc was selected, but I didn't have a fill. Um, so if I put in like a red and then click this again and, and fill arc is selected and hit OK, it will give it that red fill. So the only time I would really use something like this would probably be for... Um, something that's open, I wouldn't really do that. I might do, let's do 50 again. So that's a good one. Um, I like that. Now I'm going to delete that, but the settings are, are what I want. Um, you might come in here and just kind of click and drag a few of these. And this can make like a, a decent hair or uh, grass sort of texture. You know, maybe throw in some wild ones every now and then that are a little bit off. You can kind of be a little um, just uneven with this. You know, it probably looks really better if it's going to be uneven. I might even throw in a few wild, fast, big ones over there and um, see if throwing a few smaller ones in here. Something like this. Um, now, what you can do once you have all these, I'm just selecting everything here with my selection tool. You can like come over to your brushes tool uh, menu and, and give them a brush, you know, something like that and maybe maybe we thicken those up just a little bit and maybe we change the color to like a green um maybe a little bit darker green you know something like that so there you kind of have some artistic looking grass or something you could put at the bottom and uh and maybe copy those out or something you know just to fill out this area um, something along those lines i mean that doesn't look great or anything but just to quickly give you an example of how you might use that tool um, I think the most effective way would just to be create something uh, in mass you know um, where you don't want them to all be the exact same but you kind of want them going the same direction like the wind is blowing the grass all this one direction that's kind of what I would use it for and have used it for in the past the third tool is the spiral tool and so I'll go ahead and click on that and this works the exact same way um, you can either click and drag to start making something or you can click once and it will uh, give you these options. So the radius is going to be the distance from the center to the outside. The decay is going to be like 100% would be a circle. And anything lower than that is going to uh, start to decay that circle, so to speak. And I, I'll show you what it looks like when we mess with it a little. And then segments are going to be, oh, one segment is kind of like a a, a quarter of a circle. Um, but since these spiral in or spiral out, they, they don't, they're not really perfect uh, quarters of a circle. But you could imagine if, if we took a bunch of segments of a circle, quarters of a segment, it would kind of look like this. So that's the best way to think of it. Um, I think 10 is probably plenty. The style is just the direction it spirals out. So it's either going to, spiral out to the right or spiral out to the left. Um, we'll just click this one just to show you what it looks like. Boom, there it is. Okay, really simple. 
And I'll just go ahead and make this black again with uh, 10 point so you can see it. Um, and now if I click, now that those are my settings, if I click and drag out, I, I kind of click from the center and, and drags out. It's going to do a radius from wherever you started. So, um, and then you can, you know, be mesmerized by me going around in circles. Oh, subscribe, like a video, comment down below. Um, but as you can see, that's, that's how you kind of get the shape that you need, uh, by doing like this. And, um, it could be handy if you're creating something ornate, you want to have some of these flowing sort of, uh, I don't know. Let's see if I've got a quick brush handy, something like that. Um, but uh, if you want to do, let me show you some differences here. If we do like a 50% decay, you can see like that, that looks very different than 80%. These were 80, that's 50. So I'll bump it up to 10 just so it's noticeable. Um, the, uh, let's just bump up the segments then. Let's do double the segments. See, it's not that noticeable when it's uh, that kind of decay. But whenever you are, let's go back to 80 um, and 20. Now you can tell a difference, right? You can see that because the decay isn't as bad. So it really does spiral in a lot more. Um, and I tend to find that like 80, maybe 90 decay on some things is pretty good. I rarely go lower than that. And again, I don't use these tools all that often anyway. They're not the greatest tools in the world. Um, but... When you need a spiral, like this is a much easier way to do it than by hand because it's really hard to get this perfect sort of circular look that's always getting smaller with the pen tool. Um, and for like ornate, you know, columns or something like that, if you're creating those, uh, it's a great way to get that to happen. So next up is the rectangular grid tool. So if I click on this, it's the same thing. You either click and drag it out like so, or you click and input the values. So five by five, let's do horizontal dividers of uh, 10 and vertical dividers of five and just say, okay, there you go. So my dividers, one, two, three, four, five here. I've got 10 going this direction and you've got a little grid, right? It's pretty simple. Um, now with those settings, I can click and drag and it will keep everything, just change up the width and height, however I see fit. Now, one thing I do like to do on these is um, click this use outside rectangle as frame. And if I click OK, you'll see the difference is the edge here. These, if I'm using my direct selection tool, hotkey A, then these are uh, edges are separatable like this. They're not connected, whereas over here, this is going to be connected. It's like a square, right? Or a rectangle. So I tend to like to do that if I'm going to make a grid. Although, to be honest, most of my grid work I'm going to do in InDesign just because it's easier, better. Um, you've got a lot more options um, if you're putting text in. But this could work for infographics. I think it'd be okay. And if I do fill grid, let me, um, let me go ahead and make this a red again and click on here and say fill grid boom you're going to fill that with whatever color so um the other thing to talk about is let's make it five five again and let's do a skew of 50 percent and 50 percent so what this is going to do is um change the size of these um uh, squares within this grid and so they change by let's drop this down to three maybe so you can see there's a 50 percent difference between each of these right so they this one's 50 percent bigger than that one 50 percent bigger than this as far as um, height and then 50 percent on the width now you can change that to something else it can be um, 10 percent and 10 percent we'll see there's a much smaller difference here um, and they don't have to be, you can be, put whatever numbers you want into this. It doesn't have to be um, anything. Um, but I don't find that terribly useful again either because in InDesign, you can just go in and change uh, each one of these rows, columns to your liking. And I just find that's uh, even easier to do 
than it is in Illustrator. You could come in and do things like this to to change the value on things, but it just takes more manipulation than it does in InDesign. So, um, but that's the basics of that tool. The last tool is the Polar Grid tool, and it's going to work exactly the same way. You can either click and drag out to create a polar grid, or you can click once, and you have your options here where you can change things up. Now. Uh, the this is width and height that makes sense starting anchor point over here the concentric dividers are these so I've got one two three four and five so there's the center point and then there's the edge and all the circles on the inside here are concentric dividers the radial dividers are the ones that come out from here to the edge so one two three, four, and five. So if you increase those, let's just do, I don't know, three here and 10 there, and then hit okay. You'll see that's a, a very different looking shape, right? Um, now, let's see, let's go back to that and talk about one of the, uh, yeah, this right here. Create compound path from ellipses. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this one, and then I'm gonna create another one with that checked, and I'll show you the difference. Now, A, it does something funky here where these are all filled in and these are not. But the real big difference is going to be um, the way this is separated. So uh, this is all grouped together right now. You can either ungroup it or you can use your direct selection tool. Um, I'll just use the direct se selection tool. And just click on this outside ring and then move it. It's going to move all by itself. See that? This is independent of the other ones. So what you could do is come in and, and shift these around um, if you needed to. Obviously, that looks like, ter like crap, but if you needed to do that, that's what that's for. On this side, this is all one piece. So it's a compound path, right? All grouped, all united. And you could release the compound path, which will do this, and then it ends up being just like it is over here. But that's just what that option does. Not a huge deal. I don't use this tool ever, um, but every now and then you might need it for like an infographic or something. Um, but that's the basic gist of this. Uh, the other part I, I should show you is the skew. It works kind of similarly to the skew that you can use in the grid tool. Um, let's just do 50% and 50% and let's make them a five by five again. And then I'll delete these so you can see what we're dealing with. So there you go. Each radial segment is going to be 50% bigger than the next. And the same thing with these concentric dividers. Each one of these is going to be 50% bigger than the last. So um, looks funky. I don't know what you would ever use that for, but there could be a need for that. You know, if you're going to do percentages of something, the only problem with that is that I would think most of the time your percentages would need to be um, more uh, customizable. So, you know, this might need to be like, really thin and this would be bigger and this one over here might need to be even larger than it is um you know something like that but you can always come in with the direct selection tool um and change these if you need um, just get your basic template of it and then kind of alter it as you see fit that kind of thing but that's how you use those tools um those are all of the line segment uh tools or tools that have line segments in them um Go ahead and like this video if, if it was informative to you guys. If uh, you like the channel, please subscribe. There's going to be more coming out. We're going to go over all of the tools over here. We've gone over uh, everything from here to here so far, and we got a lot more to cover. So go back and look at my other episodes if you didn't see any of those, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, if you have any questions, uh, or if there are any videos that you'd like to see in the future. All right, guys. See you guys in the next video. Bye.